Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Just Talking About Films podcast. My name is Ian Sargentson. And my name's Luke Taylor and it is great to be with you to just connect and talk about films. By the way, we love talking with each other about films, but we also love talking with you guys about films as well. So tweet us, Facebook us, um, vote on the poll, which we'll keep open for a little bit longer. Uh, which is the closed. One. Oh, is it closed? It's closed, yeah. We won't keep it open any longer. Oh, <laughs> that means you know the results, don't you? I do know the results. I've got them written down in front of me, yeah. <laughs> okay, don't vote on our Home Alone poll, but um, uh, when we do another one, uh, vote on that. And, you know, just let's get the discussion going because we just love talking about films. But with yeah, that in mind, you. who who won? Well, I'll tell you that, but just before that, but yeah, as Luke said, I just want to echo that. Just get involved, chat to us, talk to us. If you want to come on to the podcast and and talk about your favourite films or an aspect of films that you love, then then let us know. Do that. We would love to have you involved um, in discussing um, and talking about films. Yes. So last week we discussed Luke um, was trying to make a case that Home Alone 2 was his favourite um, out of the Home Alone, well, the two Home Alone films that we identified. So bear in mind that new one's not out yet. That could take the crown. No. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. So we discussed a couple of weeks ago the new Home Sweet Home Alone that is probably one of the worst ideas any film maker, film company, film production company has ever had. But anyway, they did it. So then we got to thinking about Home Alone. And I know that there is rumoured to be four films, but I will only acknowledge the existence of two. There might be more, you know. I think there might be more. Either way, Luke, I only identify the existence of two. They've all started popping up on their Disney Plus recently. They, I guess they've got the rights now, but every now and again you see them popping up as, as suggestions. Not interested, but they keep popping up. No. So Luke argued that his favourite, and I know it's subjective, but still sometimes, even with subjective things, there's a right and a wrong. So <laughs> Luke said, argued that um, Home Alone 2 was his favourite. Um, and I was saying that Home Alone is the original and the best, um, and it can't be beaten by any of the others. So we discussed it, as you'll have heard last week, and then we ran a poll on it on Twitter. And in the poll, 73% of people agreed with me and said that <laughs> Home Alone was the original and the best. I mean, and that's good, and I feel vindicated in that, but I want to know who the 27% are. <laughs> I know one is you, Luke, and I know one seems to be Rick Trotter. Beyond that, I want to know who these people are because I need to pray for them and they need to be educated. Now, Home Alone 2 is good, even though it fully rips off the plot of the first one. It is good, but it's just not as good. So I feel fully vindicated in that, 73% to 27%. Well, I, I stand with that. Uh, is it 23%? 27%. 27%. I stand with you, the 20, the 27%. We know we're in the minority, but we also know we're right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so Twitter has spoken. So, Luke, what have you been watching this week since we last met? What have you watched? Um, had a good week this week. I've seen a lot of films this week. Um, a lot of them were rewatchers, so we don't need really to go too much into those ones, I guess. But... Um, First thing, we went to the cinema on, oh, when was it? Was it Saturday uh, to see The Eternals? Okay. Uh, the, the new Marvel movie. And uh, have you seen You haven't seen it yet, have you? No, and you weren't, when we chatted, you weren't expecting great things from it. No, I was, and I was about right, I think. Um, it was, it was very well directed. I'll not, I'll, you know, it, it, it looked amazing, you know, um, and, yeah photography everything on it was was great i'd even say it was well acted but i think the script first of all the script was clunky as anything at uh, uh but also the concept is a bit much and now they're getting into the now you know they've done the popular marvel stuff and they're getting yeah. into the more offbeat stuff it is getting a little a little strange a little uh you know when you start talking about these um Creatures that have been with us for thousands of years, but have also existed for millions of years. And you, you just kind of get back to that. Uh, yeah, it, it's a lot to swallow. Um, I enjoyed it enough. Um, but, uh, you know, when you consider we started the Marvel movies with one guy making a suit of armor, and now we're into creatures that destroy planets. And I, I'm just a little... 
thinking that I don't know how you come back from this now you've expanded things so much. Yeah, I mean, for me, as we've talked about many times before, you know that I like the films if they're good films. I don't really get the Marvel Universe and the fourth generation and all. I don't care. Don't care, right? I like them if they're good films. But, I mean, I'll ask you the question. Do you think they've run out of ideas? No, I don't think they've run out of ideas. I think they've... Because these comics have existed since the 60s. Right. Um, you know, these all have all been there. This is their back catalogue. It's all their, their stuff. And they've got their fans, you know. They've got people who really love these things. It's just... It's heading to the weird stuff that people made in the 60s when they were a little high. Right. And and the like that, that one one division was about because I didn't watch any of that because it's not my bag, but it seemed the tiny little um trailers that I saw, it just seemed bonkers. It it was it actually made sense as a whole when you it, it started off bonkers, but as it went along and it expanded and explained what was going on, it actually made a lot of sense. Um but and that I, I really enjoyed, but once you start dealing with um essentially space gods. All right, you're getting into some strange territory, and uh, yeah, you know, it was. I mean, I enjoyed it, I, you know, enough, but I did. We did come out going, you know, yeah, but very well directed. It's, it's Chloe Zhao who uh, did Nomadland who directed it. All oh, right, well, she is great, she was great, and said uh, Nomadland, so I might watch it for that. But I think, as someone, and I say we've talked about before, that I'm not that invested in Marvel, I like the, or DC or any of them, I like the films if they're good films. Hmm. But what I see as an outsider, someone who doesn't have that emotional connection and, you know, because you see so many times on Twitter, Marvel fan, you know what I mean? And I don't have that. But what I see lately is on Twitter, when there's anything comes out, whether it was, you know, the things that Disney are churning out or a new film, there seems to be a lot of controversy around them. Hmm. Because all that I see, and I don't want to get into this because it's all in the kind of worms that I don't really want to, there's all this controversy about it being too woke or too preachy or too, which I find, I think it's good. I mean, cinema has always done that and comics to a degree have always, you know, had a political or social commentary to them and they've yeah. always had messages. Um, so I think that but it, everything just seems to be controversy at the moment all the time. Yeah, and I have to admit, I don't see the controversy with with this film at all. I know there's know. there's, there's so, okay, there's some stuff that I, I understand where you know where some of the discussion comes from, but I didn't find myself really offended by the film too much. Um, no. It was more, it just felt a little a little clunky, right? Um, but you know what? It was it was all right. It was all right. Um, well, they're producing stuff at a quick rate now, aren't they? No, this stuff's just been delayed for two years. Oh, oh that <laughs> That's might the be the problem. Then, yeah. It's all coming out fast because it's all been, you know, on hold. I think Eternals was due out last year, originally. Oh, right. So but you enjoyed it nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was decent. It was decent. And I guess it's one of these things that it feels like an interview now. I feel like Jonathan Ross. But you know, <laughs> like because you've got a cine world on limited card, mm. it, it's kind of neither here nor there to some degree. Yeah. But you know, one film to the next. But would you have felt justified in paying, I don't know, 10 quid to go see it or whatever it is? I might have felt a little different then, maybe, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is one thing, is is the only thing you lose out on when you see a film with a, a, a pass is your time. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and I felt like it was, it, it, yeah, I, I had a decent enough time. I mean, it was, as, a, as a, a modern blockbuster film, you know, there was enough suitably big things happening on screen. Um, okay. I thought the cast did really well. You know, they, I enjoyed the cast, and it was it was okay. It was okay. Okay. Um, cool. Then on Sunday afternoon, I yeah, uh, I th <laughs> on BBC One. You know, when you just channel hopping, yeah, and you're looking for something, and I came across Bill on BBC One, uh, which is the William Shakespeare film made by the Horrible Histories people oh yeah you were talking about that yeah and that's, i think that's just become one of those films if i'm channel hopping and it's on i'm pretty much just watching it till the end <laughs> and so yeah um i had a good time with that you know it's 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 light it's silly um <laughs> it's funny you know I had, I had a good time um i've <laughs> seen that yeah it's, it's it's worth watching if you if you like that kind of humor you know which is basically childish humor yeah really but yeah i had a good time it was fun then um i watched the director's cut of dr sleep which is the sequel to the shining 
All right, uh, with okay. Ewan McGregor in. I've, I'd seen the original a few times and I liked it, but I'd heard the director's cut made it a much better film. Mm. So uh, it's a much longer film. Um, but I have to say, it's, it's, it's a strange one, this film. I don't like The Shining. Never really liked The Shining. Not my, mm. not my thing. But there's something about this film that creeps me out. Like, you, I just the imagery, it just make, yeah, it creeps me out. And I think it's a really good film. I know it wasn't that well received when it came out and it didn't do that well, but I actually think it might be a masterpiece on this watch. Uh-huh. Um, the, the director's cut. Yeah, the director's cut. Yeah. yeah. It's three hours. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, a, a lot of the stuff that didn't quite hold together or make sense in the original cut actually do now. And yeah, uh, yeah it, it terrifies me. It really does. <laughs> Because I think there's there's not many, like, sometimes I've watched a director's cut and I thought it's just a money-making exercise. Hmm. There's very few where I thought this is makes it's much better now. I think the, the one that is probably most is, oh, what's it called now with, oh, about the Crusades? Oh, The Last Kingdom. Yeah, The Last Kingdom. I watched a director's cut of that and it was phenomenally better. Because it explained all the bits that confused me in the first one, you know, I mean, big gaps in it, and mm. it was longer. Um, but yeah, that others have not been, um, not seemed to make that much difference. Although I'm looking forward to Rocky Four, the director's cut. Yeah, um, I mean, with this one, it it doesn't add anything big, but what it does is some of the stuff it leaps from in the first, you know, where you're like, I don't know how we got from that to that. Yeah. make a bit more sense now and it just holds and I think it, it actually keeps the pacing a little bit better as well yeah um, yeah like The Last Kingdom did that it was a sort of dialogue that helped you make the link and understand the context and what was going on and why people were suddenly somewhere and what they were doing um, and I think I watched The Prince of Thieves extended version as well and that was just more of the witch <laughs> wibbling about really so <laughs> I didn't really add anything to it but um, yeah but yeah Doctor Sleep I think the the the, the villain in it um Rose the Hat is one of the most terrifying characters I've seen on film for a long time. I tell you, terrifies me. Well played um, by uh, Rebecca Ferguson. But just there's something about that character that just scares me. <laughs> um, so it's an intense film, but I uh, really enjoyed that. Um, but you do have to clear a lot of time if you want to watch the director's cut. <laughs> yeah, it's the same with Justice League, you know, the Zack Snyder one. Yeah. Yeah, that's another long one. That's a long one. That you don't have to clear a few hours. You have to clear a few days. Yeah, <laughs> if you want to get through that one, it was handy with that one that it was in chapters because you could stop at the end of a chapter. I mean, I haven't seen any of them. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> oh, did I watch Justice League? Did I watch? I might have watched. Yeah, I think I did watch Justice League, and I was that upset with it that I didn't want to watch any of the cut of it. But I might go to it at some point. Um, then uh, we went to the cinema to watch uh, Last Night in Soho. The new Edgar. Yeah, you're looking film. forward to that. Yeah, I was, and it was good. It wasn't. It's by no means my favorite Edgar Wright film. Um, it, but it was uh, effective, effectively creepy. It was tense throughout. Kept me guessing right till the end. Um, I hadn't clicked on some of the twists, um, which maybe the obvious, but they weren't to me. Um, but it was genuinely creepy. And uh, yeah, when it came out of the cinema, both me and Amelia were like. I feel so tense, <laughs> you know, you know, you're just on the edge of your seat, the whole film. Um, yeah. And really, really, yeah, a really good film. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a shame it's not been given much prominence in the cinema because it was hard to find a time that we actually, we could, we could go see it. I um, think I've seen a lot about it, probably, again, six months ago or something. Mm. Um, but, yeah... But Anna Taylor Joy's in that, isn't she? From The Queen's Gambit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, she's very good in it. Very good. Yeah, I mean, she. I've only seen her in The Queen's Gambit that I can remember before, but she was very good in that. So, but she's um, kind of like almost an unknowable character. She's she's not the main character in it. It's this. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of the the girl who played her. Sorry, hold on one second. Um, the main person in it is. Um, hold on. Oh, I don't know how I find that. <laughs> okay. Okay, forget that. I can't find that information out too easily. Oh, there we go. Click on it again. Come on. Um, Thomason McKenzie. That's her. Okay. Uh, she was in Jojo Rabbit 
and oh, very right, old. Yeah. Um, she was very good, very, very good. Um, and she spends most of the film <laughs> terrified. And uh, she conveys it very well. Yeah, it's very, very good performance. Huh? And you don't know who to trust the whole time. And that, yeah, it's worth watching. I'd, I'd, I'd recommend it. Um, it is a little intense. I'd say it's not, a, it's not a horror film. I'd say it was a ghost story, but there's some intense moments in it. Um, but yeah, enjoyed that. Okay, good. And then, what else have I done this week? Um, Oh, two more films. Um, we did. Um, I did the man who shot Liberty Valance because I was I was all prepped and ready to watch that. <laughs> and yeah, that's, uh, yeah, you said that's John Wayne. Yeah, yeah, enjoyed that. Good John Wayne performance. Good. Um, oh, what's the guy's name? My mind's gone blank. It's uh, he's not off when your mind goes blank. James Stewart, Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, great Jimmy yeah. Stewart performance. They're both doing their thing. It's a lot more about politics than about the West. Um, yeah, I think I've watched it when I went through my Western phase and watching all the best Westerns, but and maybe I can't remember that much about it, which maybe says a lot about it. Yeah, I, mean, I enjoy it. It was a good film. But it's 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 more about it's more about how law came to the West, really, than you know yeah. that kind of thing. But it was it was enjoyable. The great great last line in it, and um, this is the West: when the legend becomes fact, print the legend. <laughs> and uh, that's a good line. I like that. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. It was a good film. Um, and then Prisoners. We watched Prisoners yesterday. Oh, um, great film! It's a yeah, it is very good. It's it's a brutal film to watch. Uh, oh yeah, uh, and you feel like you've been through the emotional ringer afterwards. But it's yeah. uh, the direction is so good. But yeah, Hugh Jackman's performance in that is yeah. is amazing. Direction, the acting, everything. I just thought it was good. The, the, the color palette, everything. I just. I just think it's a phenomenal piece of filmmaking. Hmm. I just wish it was... Well, I don't wish it was a bit happier, but it's it's emotionally draining to oh, watch yeah. it. Yeah, it is. You come out of it and you feel like you've been through the ringer and it doesn't yeah. let up at all. Even even at the end, you don't feel, you don't come out with that film feeling good. No, it's a credit to it because you do feel as though... I felt as though I was a member of that community that I was observing and experiencing these things rather than just watching through a screen. Yeah, there's a moment in that film where Hugh Jackman, I mean, I don't want to spoil it for anyone who's not watched, but he's 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 done some stuff he's he's not proud of. Mm. And he starts saying the Lord's Prayer. And uh, when he gets to, as we forgive those who sin against us, yeah. and he can't say it. No. And it just breaks him. Oh, dear me. Every time I watch that, that just breaks me that bit. Such a such a good film. Really good. Well yeah, recommended. Yeah, I haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it, I would urge you to watch it. As as Luke said, it's not an easy watch because of mm. the subject matter and the performances, but it is just a, a, a superb example of great filmmaking the, yeah. and the emotive nature of film, I think. Yeah, I think so. It's very good, but uh, don't watch it lightly because <laughs> it, no. it will. You'll go through the ringer on it. Uh, so that's been my week. It's been a good week for films. Okay, yeah, mine hasn't been too bad. Um so against my better judgment, <laughs> the first thing I did last Friday, because it came on Sky, was watch Mortal Kombat, the like, this year's release. Now I've got um, to ask now, you about that because I've I've downloaded it to my Sky Planner. Uh, do do I need to hit delete? Oh, well, I don't know. It's <laughs> it depends what you like, really. So I thought I'm not gonna watch it, it'll be rubbish. Um the last one. I didn't really like either, so I was like, I'm not going to watch this. But a couple of friends of mine said, oh, it's not as bad as you might think. <laughs> There's so an like, endorsement. <laughs> okay. And they were right and wrong, so it wasn't as bad as I might think, but it still wasn't very good. Um, so it's based on the computer game from, what, the 90s, 80s, 90s. Um and again, it's another um, try, even like the last one, that tries to go make it into a film. And it kind of does it and probably stays more faithful to the computer game, but I think maybe too faithful to the computer game, it just becomes farcical, really. So it was like, and I can't believe, because when it came out, instead of the cinema release, it got the pay 20 quid or whatever it was and watch it on your telly at home, didn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I wasn't going to get involved in, particularly for a film that I didn't really want to watch. But it's like a B movie in all aspects. You know, the acting is a bit cheesy. I suppose 
No, not definitely. But unless you go big budget, high quality cast and everything, it's always going to be a bit cheesy because the nature of it's cheesy. Mm. You know, if you make it, you could make it a bit better with a bigger budget and a better cast. But the characters are cheesy, the lines, the sets, everything. Yeah, it wasn't great. Some people, if you love all that backstory and stuff, might like it. Um, for me, it was it was all right. It passed the time. Um, there was a few bits of nostalgia in there from when I played the game, you know, some of the finish him and get over here and some of that, you know, sound bites. But, yeah, it was one of them ones where, you know, you look at your phone a bit or you don't know <laughs> what time is it. So it was that. Um, so it was all right. If you've watched Mortal Kombat, if you like it, I'd particularly like to hear from you about what you liked about it. Um, big, but if you, so it begs a question. You know, you're saying it's a B movie, and it was yeah, it was. They were going to charge you twenty quid to watch it when it first came out. Should a movie like that, a B movie that certainly costs less to make, certainly has less prestige about it, should you pay less for a film like that? I don't know because I'm one of these people even like with sports it annoyed me Do you know when sports went pay-per-view mm. if nobody had ever paid for the first one they wouldn't do it well yeah right, they wouldn't do it anymore but because they did it's it's a thing now and I get that the, the industry needs income and this that and the other mm. but surely it's for me it's like I don't know if I go and buy a Ford Fiesta I expect to pay what I don't know I don't know what they're going around. It's twenty four thousand pounds. Mm-hmm. If I go and buy a Ferrari, I don't expect it to get a Ferrari for twenty four thousand pounds. No, because it's it's different in quality and there's different prices and there's different value. It's the same with this. So if you're going to pay for a film, yeah, then that's fine. But twenty quid. It's like even now when I look on the Sky thing, I'm going on a tangent. It's like you you know when you rent a film on Sky or you yeah. can. Yeah, it's like seven ninety nine for a film. I'm going. No, I don't. Some of them are two ninety nine. I don't mind that because I would have used to have paid that at Blockbuster. Yeah. I don't mind that per se, but I can buy the DVD or the Blu Ray for most films for cheaper than seven ninety nine. You know, on um, Music Magpie or or other other <laughs> sites. Um, but you know what I mean. I can do that online or on eBay or whatever. So it's like. Make it so you're gonna get it seen by the most people, yeah, and make it affordable. That's because should should on that pay per view thing, you know, let's let's pick a big film. I know it wasn't very good, but Wonder Woman two was a big film, and people would have been happy. And it cost a lot of money to make it, but that cost the same as Mortal Kombat would have cost to watch. Yeah. And you think like this should the should there be this sort of I mean obviously when you go to the cinema it's you going into a room that needs maintaining and all, all of that kind of thing. When you're downloading something at home, surely the price point should be a little bit different for something that's not as certainly didn't cost as much to make and certainly was yeah. never intended to have the same level of people watching it as something that was bigger. I don't know. Yeah. And it's the same with Cruella and things and, and I get it. But why should watching a film at home? So for me, and maybe this is a discussion we can have in the future. So for me, paying twenty pound to watch a film at home, a new release, and I know that there might be multiple people because if there's me and Kate, that's fine. But it's like I can go to the cinema and watch it for a tenner. Hmm. Why well, am I going to pay double to watch it? And I know, as I said, there's multiple people. But it's the same as watching films on uh, football on TV, hmm. where they did it, used to charge for them. And it's like, why would I pay the same amount as I can go and watch it live for? Do you know what mm. I mean? Or, yeah, yeah. So it's one of the things, I just think they need to charge less. Mm-hmm. So then there's stuff like Prime have done this thing now, which I don't mind. It's like, it used to be the ones that were free and then the ones that you pay for. But now mm. there's ones that you can watch free if you tolerate the ads. <laughs> it's like, fair enough. Yeah, free yeah. with ads. Yeah, I'll, I'll have that. Um, but yeah, I don't know what the answer is because it has been a tough couple of years for the industry it and has. I've lost a lot of money and revenue with cinemas closed. And I suppose if you were going like a family of four going to watch something and it's 40 quid and you're getting it for 20 quid and you can watch it multiple times, but I can't imagine many situations where a family of four would have been going to watch Mortal Kombat. No, no, I can't either. No. Just, it, it just, you wonder whether there's a better way forward on that. Um, because of course, they need to make money or you, or you don't get films. But whether there's a better scale, you know, even even going to the cinema, you, the cinema prices aren't, aren't exactly cheap. 
But you go to watch an independent film that's cost, you know, little to make and maybe isn't going to get the audience. If that costs the same as going to see a blockbuster, then surely if, the, if that costs less to go see, more people will go see it. Yeah, I mean, the obvious thing for me would be to go, you know, like you get Netflix and Amazon Prime and Disney on, is to make one that has all the new releases come out, the cinematic releases, and you pay a subscription fee and you get them all, you know, like a season ticket, but then that's going to hamstring the cin- the cinema industry. It is. I think they were looking at that at one point, but the price is so high. Yeah. <laughs> that it was just never going to happen. Anyway, yeah, do sorry. you know what I mean? No, that'd be the only way around it, I would think, but we'll see. No, it's so- up to them. It's a bit of a well, anyway. I wasn't going to pay twenty there. quid for Mortal Kombat. <laughs> now, having seen it, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't pay anything to watch it again. Yeah, fair enough. And that, in that case, I might not bother. <laughs> well, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what you think. You might love it. It's not awful. I would rate it a five out of ten. It's average. I like good choreography and sequences. Like you know, if it's been well designed and well well made, I can I can get some enjoyment out of that. But. I've got a review on Instagram and a letterbox, so you can have a look there. It's just a bit one-dimensional. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so, yeah, it's creating a backstory for a computer game that really didn't need a backstory. <laughs> but it's probably slightly better than Street Fighter. <laughs> you know, with John claude Van Damme. <laughs> so, well, that, yeah, that goes without saying. And then I watched Game Night. Um, we had to watch for Film Club. Now, I know this is one of your favourite films. It is. And I think we were talking about this, that comedy is so subjective. It's probably... It's probably the most divisive of genres. Um, so I think it's difficult to get right, particularly... So I know for me, I don't really laugh out loud roaring at anything. I very rarely laugh out loud at the cinema. I will giggle a little bit. I usually I'll smile and nod in approval. And I think Game Night was a bit like that for me. There was a lot of good, um, witty dialogue. I liked the dialogue and I admired it without ever bursting out laughing thought it was very clever the physical comedy yeah it was neither you know there for me it was all right some bits were better than others um but i like the situational aspects really so if you haven't seen it i won't spoil it but there's a bit in it where that you're not really the characters don't know that what they're dealing with is a real situation they think it's fake so and they're in a bar and that bit's quite funny and so I did like it. I like Jason Bateman. I like Rachel McAdams. I think she's very underrated. I like Jesse Plemons. So there's a lot of good actors in it. His quality was well made. So as far as comedies go, as I say, which is quite subjective, in my top 50 films, there's not that many comedies. But this is one of the better ones that I've seen in recent years, I think. Mm. I think a lot of my favourite comedies are more old school. It's a rarity a film like that, I think now, where it's a big, expensive comedy that isn't full of, you know, isn't absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Um, but has good stars in it and is just just a good, you know, solid comedy. You don't get many of them nowadays. No, it all goes down the smut route, doesn't it? You know, mm. and it started with American Pie and The Hangover and Bridesmaids, and, and it just it just it was all very similar. And again, it's subjective. There's funny bits in it, but I like my humour to be a bit more intelligent. <laughs> Fair enough. You know, do you um, know what I mean? Yeah, you I have to that. work hard to get the jokes or it's funny. So, well, maybe not all of it, because I like Naked Gun, I like air, Airplane and different things, but I also like the other guys. I like Monty Python. So there's various different things, but say a lot of modern comedy I don't, I don't really get. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy. I think it's, it's it's a well shot film as well. It's uh, yeah, 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 well made. Yeah, it well looks made. like it looks great. You, know, you want to be in their game night gang, really. You do, you do. All these nice houses and, and suburbia and stuff. So um, after that, I watched Shooter with Mark Wahlberg, the original one, because I'd watched the the series on Prime not recently, but I'd watched it. And I always remember that I watched Shooter on release and thought it was really good. But hadn't, I think it was two thousand seven, but hadn't watched it since. So I'd always been meaning to rewatch it, because mm. um, in my mind it was alongside stuff like Enemy of the State and Taken, and you know I had a good thing. And yeah, on rewatch it was good. I think there is potential, and I think the storyline and the plot are excellent. I think it's well shot in parts. 
Um, but I think it just falls short with too, too many cliches. So it's a bit cliched that the female love interest, it's just a bit one dimensional, a bit obvious, a bit cheesy. Um, and some of the bits, the bad guys are a bit one dimensional and just let's, how can we make these bad guys look as bad as bad guys should be? Um, so, but the story is, is phenomenal. I think it could have been, again, with a bigger budget. I think it's just a, such a great idea. And I think the series had more chance to go into that. So unpacked it a bit further and because it was more time probably did it a bit more service, um, but just kind of lost its way a little bit. So, yeah, I really enjoyed Shooter, um, and that will bring me on to something I want to chat about in a bit. And then after that, I watched Final Film Watch this week, is The Harder They Fall, which is on Netflix, the new one, the Western with Idris Elba um, in it. Yeah. And I think... Um, it's another one of these things that I'd seen and thought, oh, that looks good. And then by the time I saw anything online, there was a bit of controversy about the, the political points it's trying to make. But I, mean, I didn't get involved in it. I thought, as a story, it was good. Um, I thought there was a lot said about the soundtrack, which I like the soundtrack. I like the song. <laughs> I just don't think it fit in the film very well. Mm. Um but the story was good. The first half of the film, it really built up and you were like, oh, yeah, and it wasn't anything new, but it was like, oh, I like this. It was done well. Um, the acting was... I thought the characters, the casting was really good. Um, there were some good acting performances and that some very underrated actors in some aspects. Um, so I thought it was good, and then it kind of just fell flat. You know, you're building up to this crescendo, this big final act, and it kind of finished with a whimper. Hmm. Um, so that was one of the main issues I had with it, was it just fell away. But the biggest, not the biggest issue, but another big issue I had with it was that everybody was pristinely dressed. You know, in the <laughs> Wild West, there's dust everywhere. And they're doing it hard did look very clear and very yeah. clean, didn't it? Yeah, I know. And they wouldn't have washed the clothes every day, but everything was perfectly pressed and there was nobody scruffy. <laughs> there was a couple bit of dust after they'd been rolling around in the dirt for a bit, but Everybody was just pristine. <laughs> and I was like, oh, come on, even when there's a character that gets released from prison and he's been in prison for a while, and I can't imagine it was a very nice prison, but his prison outfit is pristine. He looks superb in it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things about the Sergio Leone Westerns that I love is they are so dusty. <laughs> yeah. So dusty. And there was a lovely tribute to Chadwick Boseman in it, which I saw and then had to Google to make sure it was a tribute and it was an Easter egg put in there, but I really liked that touch. I thought that was nice. Um, so, yeah, I think it was a good... The first half of the film was really good, apart from the pristine claws. The second half, for me, it just it just faded away. It's like they'd used all of their energy <laughs> setting it up and then it just fell apart. Okay. that's, that's it. I started it. I haven't gone very far on it yet. I just be, began to start yesterday, but... Uh... Yeah, yeah. So she, I, I, the bits I've seen, it was a little bit like watching somebody else play Red Dead Redemption, and I just wanted to play it instead. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like that. But the soundtrack, I say, it's a good soundtrack. It's all loud, and you know, a lot of bass and beat and stuff. And it was um, wasn't distracting, but it didn't really enhance the, the my viewing pleasure. It kind of just made me. I want to listen to the music. I watched the film, but I couldn't do both at the same time. <laughs> Okay. Um, but there's some yeah, there's some good dialogue in it, so it wasn't bad. I just think it could have been better. Okay, that's fair. I, I, I might give. It, I, yeah, I started it, and I was kind of getting into it, but I think I'll, I'll try and finish it off for next week. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, see what you think about the ending. I said the first half was good, hmm. and it was a, almost a bit like, oh, is it going to be nicey nicey? And then you quickly realise, oh no, it's not. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit. I think a bit of a. Tarantino tribute in there somewhere. Do you know what I mean? There's a bit of that with seems very of sudden movements, Tarantino. a lot of loud, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think it fed, fed it, fell away at the end a bit. I'm just going back slightly, so to shooter, and it's just a topic I just wanted to 
touch on with you. So you know sometimes as someone who watches films or you call yourself a cinephile or whatever and you discuss it and you chat with people and you see in discussions on Twitter, like who's the greatest actor and who's your favourite actor and he's like Daniel Day-Lewis or I don't know, so Leonardo DiCaprio, all great actors. And I was thinking about this the other day when I watched Shooter that it's not a guilty pleasure as such, but I really like and Ray, Mark Wahlberg is an actor. I like a lot of his films. And I would say maybe he's limited, but I don't think he's one-dimensional. I think he plays a couple of parts, either comedy or the tough guy, and he does it really well. But I, I can't think of a film that he's been in that I've hated. But I think it's one of the things that if someone said, oh, who, who are your favourite actors? That I, wouldn't, I would feel a bit like... You'd feel silly saying Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, I think there's a people would be a bit snobbish about it. And, go, and I'm not saying he's... That, well, I don't know if I am saying how tal- because he does what he does really well. I'm always convinced that he is the character he says he is, even Spencer. That's, that's <laughs> because he keeps playing the same character. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but I, I, I find it utterly believable. I did in Shooter when he was uh, Billy Bob Swaggart um, and Patrick's Day and all of the things that he's been in, the other guys, um, you know, Daddy's Home, whatever. So I just, yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to see if there's any, excuse me, but it you can think of that you think not that you would feel embarrassing, but you'd feel a bit like would would I put this forward in one of my favourite actors, actresses, things because through fear of you know what people might say. Actors are you ashamed of liking? No, yeah, not ashamed, <laughs> but I just don't see him disgusting when people say, Oh, I love this, I love that. Do you know what I mean? Or what a great actor. Like DiCaprio gets mentioned a lot. De Niro, Pacino. People talk about all their films. And and I'm not comparing Wahlberg's performances to them, but I think he's been convincing in every role I've seen him. And I, and I, if, he, if he's in a film, I'd be more inclined to watch him than if he wasn't. Hmm. Hmm. That's so, an interesting one. I, I'm trying to think off the top of my head if there's anyone that I think like that about, but it's hard to, it's hard to think just here and now. Um, but I'm I'm trying to look for a bad Mark Wahlberg film. There's a lot. That's the thing. There's a lot of bad Mark Wahlberg films. Whether he's bad in them is another thing altogether. Yeah, I don't know. Just like the Italian Job, I like that. I, I mean, don't know. He's in like Transformers: was, The Last Night. I didn't like that it was called the Italian Job. I liked it. Yeah, Transformers. I would have liked all of the Transformers films if I could have seen what was going on in any of them. <laughs> yeah, Ted Two. I wasn't keen on the Ted films. Well, I haven't seen Ted or Ted Two. Uh, that might put you off him. Well, again, it was going back to that comedy thing that we talked about, the same with Bad Santa and stuff. It's not really my bag when it's just, yeah. let's see how disgusting we can be. Do you know what I mean? How, how naughty we get. That's not really my thing. And maybe I've missed out, um, but from what I've read, not really. Mm. Um, oh, Date Night. He was very funny in Date Night. Yeah, yeah he was great in Date Night. <laughs> um, Max Payne. Max Payne. You can't defend that film. Yeah, but again, that's going back to what we were talking about before of Mortal Kombat. Some it's like computer games, and we're gonna we're gonna discuss at some point is they don't really always transfer very well. Oh, I've got Max one. Payne, I've got one. Here, this is, this is a content. This is a bad film. You can't defend this Planet of the Apes. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> um oh a rock star. Do you remember that one where he played a rock star? Yeah. I quite like that. I remember going to cinema. So yeah, it was all right. yeah. He's been in a lot of films. He has he been has. in a lot. Um, he's caught he's carved out a career for himself since being Marky Mark. And he's the owner, the owner chain of burger restaurants as well. So wall burgers, <laughs> come on. <laughs> so, Mark, if you're watching, I'm a big fan, um, and I'm not ashamed to say. <laughs> well, I'll find somebody that I'm a big fan of. That I'm, I'm a, not ashamed to say, but I'll... Uh, yeah, I'll, but it's not like that we should be, because we are, it's all it's say, subjective, but it's sometimes like when you just don't see them in a discussion much yes. about... Not say that he might... Is he ever going to win an Oscar? And he might, but you know what I mean? But because of the films... But I think he just does what he does well. He knows. He plays to his strengths. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, so I guess that question goes out to you watching. Is there any? Well, first of all, what do you think of Mark Wahlberg? Do you agree with uh, Ian, or do you think actually he's he's not great at all? Um, we won't do a poll on that though. No. <laughs> or if there's someone that you think is a good actor that doesn't that, you, that doesn't get mentioned in all the big things, or that you like and you feel a bit 
silly about saying that, or even a film that you like or something that you think, oh, an opinion where you think, oh, I'm not sure how well received this would be. The film you don't uh, mention you, in discussions. <laughs> yeah, not that you care, but I'm not sure how well received this would be because there's a lot of, I think, and this is what we do different and what we aim to do different, there's a lot of, in this um, topic, there's a lot of snobbery out there, I think. I think there's, like with, with anything, it's a bit like, <laughs> You know what I mean? You like what you like, but then there's these things that if you say certain names and I don't know, that you should be like Hitchcock or Kubrick or, do you know what I mean? It makes you more, your opinion more valued. And I go, yeah, yeah maybe, but I just want to, you like what you like. And I like Mark Wahlberg films. <laughs> <laughs> um, we didn't do a Thunderdome this week, um, mainly because we couldn't think of anything. Um, we just because it's only been it's been less than a week since we last recorded, so we haven't had the opportunity to come up with something. But we will do for next time. Um, but do you have any opinions of films that you'd like us to discuss? For example, um, we'll not go the Mark Wahlberg route, but uh, can you think of a computer game film that you think is actually really good? Would you argue the case for it? Um, or anything like that? I don't. I can't think of one. I can't think of any. No, not that are strictly computer game ones. Like, because there's Ready Player One, we said that, that was all right. Um, Wreck It Ralph was good, but other ones I think of that are direct from computer games Max Payne, you know, Rampage, um, Street Fighter. I tried Sonic the Hedgehog and I couldn't finish it. Oh, I didn't, I didn't hate that. I didn't <laughs> like it. But... I got annoyed by it and turned it off. But oh, I don't so... think it was made for me. No. Anyway, so let us know if you've got anything that you think would be a fun discussion for us where we can take different sides on it and uh, be good to know what you think would be a good discussion. Yeah, anything. So even like, I mean, this may be one for the future, but like even Thunderdome, like I'm, I'm not, I might have to go back and re-watch them, but I'm not, I didn't, wasn't impressed with Mad Max. I have often. to say I wasn't that keen on, I like the, the new one, the, um, Fury Road. I thought Fury Road was great. Is that Tom I'm Hardy? Not, I'm not that into the others. Mel Gibson was the first one, and then it was Tom Hardy, is it? Yeah, yeah. I just find, I don't know, the whole post-apocalyptic weird fashion. Why does everybody wear rubbish fashion in the future? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but I might have to go back and re-watch them, because I watched them, as we've talked about before, when I was younger, and the way I watched films was very different. I just want to be entertained instantly with explosions and, you know different things so yeah, revisit so, Fury World Fury World's great um, so yeah I'm going to watch James Bond tomorrow night so I will definitely be able to talk about it next week we're supposed to talk about it this week but we moved film and forward um, so it seems to me my opinion on the new James Bond film is taking longer than the film actually took to come out oh, no, that's um, not possible <laughs> yeah and then I've booked for Ghostbusters Afterlife for the 18th so I'm really excited about that yeah, that's going to be great fun. I hope. I so, really. I'm nervous about that one. I'm so looking forward to it. I don't. I, I, I'm. I don't know how I'll handle it if it's bad. I think I'll watch Ghostbusters one and two in preparation. Yes, I did that a few weeks ago. Um, Ghostbusters two, better than I remember it. I thought you were going to say better than the original, and Luke. No, no. There, there's our topic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but better than I remember it being. Um, I quite enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's really all I've got this week. My new, um, my new um, issue of Empire's just arrived, so I'll have, have a look through that. And see what's there. <laughs> yes, and uh, Spider Man's coming out soon. That's the feature. Yeah, yeah. Empire this week, isn't that's it? That's exciting. So, so very good. So get in touch with us. Let us know what you think about anything we've said about the films that you've been watching about. Um, what you think about Mark Wahlberg or any actors that you think, oh, I like them, but I'm not sure how well it'd be received if I put it in. Like another one for me would be maybe not so much lately, but there was a period where I just liked pretty much a lot of the stuff that Dwayne The Rock Johnson was in. I thought he picked his roles well. Whereas now he just seems to be in everything. <laughs> uh, so now that the film seems to form around him. Yeah. <laughs> So let us know if there's any actors that you think like that, where you just, you just like their films. 
They may not be the greatest films, they may not be the best performances, but you just like them. I mean, um, and for example, you really into Sandra Bullock. Let us know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we say that because we have a friend who is. <laughs> yeah, he likes a lot of her films. So, um, so yeah, uh, let us know what you're going to see, what you're watching, um, if you've seen anything at the cinema, um, and that's it. Yep. And if um, you want to come on, let us know that you want to come on and, and discuss these things with us. Yes, but sometimes especially- as much... As much as it's good, me and Luke chatting, we do like chatting to other people as well. We do, especially if you've got a controversial opinion about a film. We'd love that. Yeah, fantastic. So until next week, we will see you soon. Until next week, we'll see you soon. That makes no sense. <laughs> we will. S- <laughs> until next week, so long. <laughs> That's a fun end. <laughs> we'll make keep all that. Yeah.